All right, so welcome back. Uh, today, we're just fixing a couple long-standing issues. First, um, we're making sure the treasure chest uh, stays closed when you go from one scene to another. And second, we're gonna be fixing the camera between our overworld and our house. And then also just a little bit of organization with the camera stuff too. So uh, stick around and let's dive right in. All right, so diving right in, the next thing that we need to fix is the treasure chest. So the way things happen right now is if you, actually the treasure chest and the house. So we'll deal with the house first, but the main thing with the treasure chest is when you open the chest, um, the chest here in the scene right now knows that it's been opened and it knows that you can't open it again because it was already opened once. But then when you leave the scene, say you go into the dungeon and come back to this scene, and this treasure chest reloads exactly as it was, meaning it reloads thinking it has contents. <clears throat> Pardon me. So we need to have some way of storing that information in between scenes. And we already have kind of a, a pattern that we, we do that with, or that I've been doing that with, um, that we're gonna be using and extending to know whether or not this treasure chest should stay open. The other issue that was brought up is, since I added that those camera changes in the last episode, now, of course, the camera is acting a little funky in the house. So let me just show you what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna go up here to the house and I'm gonna go in. And there we go, I've got this null reference exception error. So a null reference exception error, I know that we've encountered them before, but I always like to explain it because it's the most common error that you see if you ever look at uh, the Unity boards on Reddit or Stack Overflow. A null reference exception error happens when your camera is trying to, um, or not your camera, when a script is trying to find just a value for something and it thinks it should know what the value is, but that value was never set. There's no reference to it. Null means empty, which means that there was no correct reference for the script to use. In this case, uh, we're using our scene transition here, which we're using to go from uh, from our main scene to the other scene, and this has no camera min or max. So to fix that really quickly here, I'm gonna go to my scriptable objects, my camera, I have dungeon overworld, I'm gonna add a new, so create, oh, sorry, didn't mean to make a script, I meant to make a folder. Let's just delete that. And then uh, instead I'm gonna make a folder, like I should have. All right, there we go, create folder and this is going to be called house and then inside the house I'm going to make a camera min and a camera max so I'm going to create a vector value maybe oh it's thinking down there sometimes when I record it doesn't like this I'm going to call this house min and then I'm going to duplicate it and call this one house max I have it set up so that the house should stay with the camera at zero, zero at all times, but let me go back into the house to make sure. So if I go back into the house here, flip over to scenes. Yeah, my camera's just gonna stay at zero, zero. So camera, house, house max, zero, zero, house min, zero, zero. Now, if I go back into my, my overworld scene here, I'm gonna find my transitions, my scene transition, which I'm gonna, might as well call this house transition, so it's a bit more descriptive. This gets a camera min and max from the house min and max. So house max, house min. I guess I didn't need to make two of them. I could have just used the same for both since, since it is the same. But let's make sure that this is gonna work the way I want it to. So I actually haven't tested this yet. So that always goes well when I haven't tested my code before I start writing it. Some of you enjoy me doing that, some of you do not. So, oh, there we go. And now I forgot that the house needs to, so I want to save. Uh, doo -doo -doo. So my scene transition here needs to have a new camera min and max. And I actually need to look at my sample scene for that. So my camera's min and max to begin with. Oh, did I actually create it though? I did, oh, okay, cool. So, 
back to the house interior here. Um, scene transition, overworld, there we go. Camera max is camera max, camera min is camera min. Cool. So, save everything, go back to my overworld, let's hit play, and let's test this out. So, hopefully this will work like it should. Just gonna go up here, mirror. Oh, almost. Okay. So, what does the camera think its min and max are? Probably zero zero, huh? Um, yep, thinks its min and max are zero zero. So what? Yeah, their default values are. Huh. Okay. Well. I'll set these default values. Oh, no, 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 because 17, negative 6, and 8, negative 19. Where is it right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nope, I need to make another one. So uh, I've got my overworld. I'm going to make a folder in here. And I'm going to call this one Dungeon 2 overworld and then this is going to get these put into it and I'm going to make another one that I'm going to call house to overworld so house to overworld and then in here this gets a uh, vector value for camera max and that's going to be whatever the camera max is right now so 17 negative 6 17, negative 6. And then I'll duplicate this. And this is camera min. Oh, okay. Well, it doesn't matter. Just take off the one from that. Uh, camera min is going to be whatever the camera's min is right now, which is 8, negative 19. So, 8, negative 19. All right, so... Let's try this out again here. Uh, doo -doo. All right, cool. So it worked for there. Oh, I didn't actually change it though in the scene. Good lord. Sometimes I'm put together. Other times, not so much. So house to dungeon, camera max, camera men. I'm gonna save this scene. Back to the overworld. There we go. All right. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm sure some of you don't like it when I make those noises because I'm awkward and don't like to have empty air. So going in, going back out. All right, cool. Worked the way it was supposed to. So now let's make it so that the chest um, is correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new type of scriptable object. So in my scripts folder, in my scriptable objects folder, this is going to be just a Boolean value. This is going to be a value that tells whether something is true or false. So I'm going to call this bool value. And I'm going to open that up in Visual Studio. And while I'm opening it up, I might as well open up the float value too, because I'm going to be borrowing most of the code from that. So I will meet you back here once Visual Studio is open. Okay, so here I am in uh, Visual Studio. So I'm gonna look at my bool value script. I'm gonna do the same thing that we've done before to make this a scriptable object. So first, instead of inheriting from mono behavior, it's gonna inherit from the scriptable object and create asset menu. Um, I don't need a start or an update. And I do also need to have this inherit from I serialization callback receiver. I'm going to get an error until I add the before serialize and after deserialize. So I'm going to copy these and paste these in here. So this isn't going to be a float. This is going to be a bool. And then my runtime value, I'm going to hide. Um, on after deserialize, runtime value is initial value. On before serialize, okay, cool. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to go back into Unity here. 
And the way I want to organize this is I already have a scriptable objects folder. So I've got my cameraman max, I've got my enemy healths. It's a weird word, healths. Should it just be health? I don't know. Anyway, I've got my items, my player stuff, my signals. I'm going to make a new folder here. And I'm going to call this treasure chests. And I might want to have treasure chests all over the place. So I'm going to organize this even more. I'm going to make a folder inside of this for overworld chest. Chests. And then I have to have some way of distinguishing the chests from one another. Um, so like I've got a chest right here, but maybe I want, you know, like, like 50 chests. So I'm just going to call this chest here chest A, assuming I'm not going to have more than 26 chests in one area. And then to make sure that I know that this is chest A, I'm going to find that treasure chest. I'm going to give it a tag, um, little icon here, and I'm going to, at the end, this is treasure chest A. So I know it's A. Okay, so I'm going to create a Boolean value, and I'll call this chest A. And this is going to be whether that chest is open or closed. Now I'm going to open up my treasure chest script here. So I've got my contents, I've got my bool is open. I'm going to make another Boolean value. So this is going to be a public bool value. And this is going to be, I don't know, we'll call this stored open. Sure, why not? Um, let's organize this a little bit. One thing that was pointed out in the, um, in the Discord by Griselli is that I kind of broke the way the pattern I've been using in building this project by having the treasure chest have direct access to the player inventory. So I'm kind of rethinking how I want to do that if I want to do it through like a signal or something like that. I don't know. Um, but you're right, um, Chriselli from the Discord, whoever you are. <laughs> um, I, I do, I do, I have set a precedent of trying to keep things decoupled and that kind of couples them. So anyway, uh, while I'm here, I might as well make a couple headers um, just for organization's sake. So this is going to be like, uh, let's say, header contents and then this is going to be header signals and dialogue and then this last one is just header animation there we go so what I want to do is in my start here before I do anything else is uh, I want to say uh, is open is equal to stored open dot runtime value so the value that we're currently using and then when we open it I want to also say stored open dot runtime value is true nope not tour true all right cool so I'm going to save this, and that should be fine. Let's go back to Unity here really quick. Um, I want to look at my treasure chest for chest A. My initial value is going to be false. So if I hit play, that chest shouldn't open. But if I open it, leave the scene, and come back, it should stay open. Let's, uh, let's test this out and see if I broke anything here. Um, all right, cool, so I already got a null reference exception. Oh, hey, because I didn't tell the treasure chest what its chest value was. Good Lord. So stored open needs to be chest A. There we go. This should be better now. So we're gonna play. And do, do. All right, cool, no more null reference exception errors. And if I look at my treasure chest, it's closed. So I'm going to fast forward through this part, but I'm gonna go open that chest I'm going to leave the room, and then I'm going to come back. So hang on for just a second. Okay, so we're back in the room now. If I go over... Oh, okay. Haha. <laughs> so the animation is that it's still closed, but I bet you if I check on it... Nope, doesn't know it's open. Is chest A set to be open? 
Oh, that's right, because I hid the value in the inspector. Um, stored open dot runtime value is true. Hmm. Okay. Well, um, I will be right back. All right. So welcome back. That was just a pretty simple thing to fix. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set my is open instead of just directly setting it to be true or my runtime value for stored open instead of setting it directly to be true. I'm just going to set it to be equal to is open. Uh, and then also what I want to do here in my start method is I want to say if is open, then I want to trigger the animation. So anim.setbool open true. Dot set bool opened true. That's the right way, right? Yep. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna pop back into Unity here. Um, now by default, my initial value is false. So even though I might make it true, when I stop the game, that treasure chest becomes closed again. So I'm gonna wait for this to save really quickly here. And then let's give this a try. So I'm gonna hit play. I'm gonna walk over to that chest again. This time I'll exit the scene through the dungeon, which should be okay. All right, so there we go. Now, I have this hidden in Inspector, but if I look at Treasure Chest A, it's set to be open, and I set the runtime value of Chest A to be whatever that is open value is. So I'm going to go back over here. Oh, I said I was going to go through the dungeon, didn't I? Oh, well. Back up there, back down here. And now let's take a look at our chest. This is the moment of truth. Look at that nice open chest. Huh? Let's even try and go down and see if we can we can open it. The context clue is still going to fire, I think. Maybe it won't. Nope. Ha 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 ha. All right. There we go. So this was a couple small issues that were bothering me, <laughs> at least, and I'm sure it bothered a few of you out there too. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, find out when I post new videos, or you can join the Discord. There's a ton of really cool people in the Discord. Um, so, yeah. Otherwise, I hope everybody out there has themselves a wonderful day. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving a like, subscribing to the channel, or telling a friend who might be interested. Also, please consider following me on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can earn access to tangible rewards, like early access to videos, backer-only videos and series, polls for future topics, streams, and even individual tutoring sessions. You can find a link to that in the description. And as always, have yourselves a wonderful day.